Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well this vlog was brought about when my wife was bought a pair of these. These are Nike Pegasus shoes, running shoes. And I was looking at them and I just went like this. I just bent them and then they bounced back. And they bounced back with such amazing power that I thought, hang on a second. Does that really help your running? That rebound, that automatic rebound, can that actually make your running more efficient? Effectively, can you use less power because of that rebound than running in any other shoe? So I thought, if I use the stride power meter on the shoes, can I actually judge if the power difference between one shoe or another is actually significant? So I thought about devising a test to do that. Let's just go to the computer and remind you of what power is and how it's calculated. Now I've said before power equals force times speed and importantly in running or in cycling or even in swimming the speed is the rate at which the force is applied, the speed of your feet in running, which is called cadence. Now everyone says that the Nike vapor flyers which were used to break the two-hour record are amazing shoes. Nobody would really run without anything with a carbon fibre um, strip through the shoe because it makes such a difference. So if that's the case, can we actually, with the use of the stride power meter, actually judge the power that a shoe gives you? In other words, can I run at the same speed for less power outage than I would in another shoe? Now more importantly, if power equals force times speed, and we set the speed to a particular level, let's say 170 steps per minute, then if power goes up or power goes down, then the only thing to change is force. That must be going up or down. And that's something we can use. That's really useful. What would it mean in reality if I could shave a couple of watts off at a particular speed? My requirement to use watts was actually a couple of watts better than it is now. Well, let's use the experiment that we did before that you can use if you go to the link below this video. Um, you can use this yourself as well and have a look for yourself. So currently my mass is 73 kilograms and my FTP is 210, which means that I should be able to run 10.8 kilometers in an hour running at 10.8 kilometers for an hour because remember FTP is the maximum you can run in one hour. Now that means I've got 210 watts. Now if a shoe allowed me to run at 208 watts for that 10.8 kilometers that would be saving 210 versus 208 is 1% of my watts and 1% of 210 is actually 2 watts. So that's just like increasing my FTP to 212. So let's have a look and see what that does. Increase to 212 and suddenly I can run 100 metres more in that one hour. 10.9 kilometres an hour as opposed to 10.8. But let's have a look further on. Let's see what that does to my marathon time. Now originally um, with 210 watts my marathon time should be between 260 and 261 minutes, which is 4, 20, 4 hours 20 to 4 hours 21. You can see 42.2. And interestingly, if I change again to 212 watts, suddenly my new FTP with my new shoes, I can do it in 258 minutes without doing a single other thing. Just changing my shoes has just shaved off two and a half minutes from my marathon time. So I started looking for all the shoes I could possibly have that I could test. And I started with the ones I normally run in. These are the On Cloud Flows. Um, and they're 20, 221 grams. They're just such a nice, comfortable fit and fairly bouncy as a shoe. These are the On Cloud Runners. And these are 227 grams. These push you more onto your front foot. They're, they're, there's fewer bulbs at the back to actually use and, and it sort of pushes you forward when you run, which is exactly the same as these, the Newtons. Now these are 247 grams, but these are, are shoes that are made to actually push you onto your forefoot. The trouble with these is, is often if you've got a niggle on your Achilles, it'll actually exacerbate it. Now these last two are just 
basic trainers that I wear for generally going around the house or doing the, even the garden. This is a feeler trainer. It's actually 221 grams, which is quite light, but there's, there's no response in it. And these are the Costco Court Classic shoes. I mean, these cost £35, these cost £24, and these are completely dead. Now, these weigh 221 grams, these weigh 417 grams. So these are the heaviest and the least responsive shoe, and also the cheapest. So we're talking £120, sorry, £130, £120, about £130 again. Then we're talking 35 and we're talking 24 are we wasting money on shoes? Well, it'll be interesting to find out. Here's the test I devised. Now we know that power equals force times speed. Now if I keep the speed, in other words, the cadence, at a particular cadence, at 170 steps a minute, then if power changes, the force I'm using changes. We've already seen that. So I set up the treadmill, to be at a particular speed for every single run, and I was going to run at that 170 steps a minute. So if there was a difference in the power needed to run that particular speed, that presumably was down to the shoes. Now I wanted to make absolutely certain that fatigue didn't come into it. Fatigue was not a factor in the test. So the first test I devised was to run with those five shoes twice through 300 meters so it's 10 300 meters and we're going to go up you through the shoes one way then back down the other so the one that was the fifth would also be the sixth and the one with the foot was the first would also be the tenth trying to negate the effect of fatigue if there was any during all of those runs now i did two of these runs on different days and the second time I reversed the order of the shoes so the one that was first became fifth and the one that was fifth became first etc. So hopefully between the two runs we actually get a reasonable look at what power was needed to run at that particular speed at that particular cadence. Now remember if the power was different presumably that was just down to the shoes. So we're now looking at the experiment done with the 10 300s. Remember that was done twice. And to make it fair and to, to try and ensure that fatigue doesn't, isn't representative in, in any of these figures, I'm going up through the shoes, then back down through the shoes. And on the second run, I'm going up that way through the shoes and down that way. So in the first one, the court shoe is the fifth and sixth. And in the second one, the court shoe is the first and the tenth. Now what we're really looking at is the average power used for all the runs. And you'll see in the first one we had 221.5 as an average for the two runs on the cloud flows. Cloud runner 224, 223.5 for the Newtons, 223.5 for the feeler, and 221.5 for the Costco court shoe. Now here we're looking at the Costco court shoe, a 24 pound shoe, which is actually equivalent to the cloud flow, the on cloud flow shoe at 130 pounds. So we're looking at a huge difference in potentially the cost, but very little benefit, it appears, in return. In the second um, experiment, we had 217.5 for the flows, for the runners, 215.5, for the Newtons, 221.5, for the feelers, 221.5, and for the Costco court shoe, 217. So we're actually... The, the on-cloud runners actually beat the Costco court shoe um, by 1.5 watts, but we're still looking at the Costco court shoe beating all of the others, and they're the cheapest shoe available. And if we look at the averages of the four, for the flows we've got 219.5, for the runners we've got 219.75, Newton's 222.5, Feelers 222.5, and for the Costco court shoe, 219.25. That actually is the best average over the four runs for any of the shoes. So it looks like at the moment, I've been wasting a huge amount of money on buying shoes that I think are going to improve my running. So to my complete surprise, the £24 Costco court shoe, which to me feels completely dead when I run in it, 
was the best power shoe for those 300 meters. Now this is also by far by about 200 grams the heaviest shoe. So I'm actually making myself heavier by wearing these shoes and actually running at less power. That is absolutely astounding, but it does suggest that we may well be wasting money when we buy an expensive pair of shoes. To be perfectly frank, I was shocked, but then this happened. My, my children bought me a pair of Pegasus running shoes for my birthday. So I now had a dilemma. I had to include these in the test. So what I did was I dumped the feeler ones and carried on with five pairs because I didn't want to just distort it going up to six pairs. So the feeler ones I didn't think were adding anything. They felt really dead. There was nothing in them. But I couldn't ignore the Costco court shoe because this had shocked me completely and actually was the best shoe overall up to this point. So the need for a second test was obvious, but this I thought I'd do slightly differently. I thought I'd run 800 meters at a steady pace and try and keep the cadence exactly what the shoe felt I should be doing. Let's see if that made a difference to the results. So we're trying to test a longer distance here. We're doing 800 meters at a steady pace. So I haven't really strictly suggested a cadence. Um, I'm just running at a normal cadence for me. Um, and seeing what that does to the power numbers on each shoe. I did do a few more runs with the Pegasus just to get used to them, because obviously when you've just got a new shoe, you actually want to get used to it. So I did a few more runs with that and only one run with the other shoes at 800 metres. If you look at the power numbers, we've got 207 for the flows, 206 for the runners, Newton's 211, Costco Court shoe 206, and for the Pegasus we've got 207, 210, 211, and 210. Um, now 206 is once again the best figure that we have out there um, and we can't really see a reason why that should be. If we look at all the other figures um, the pace is fairly similar. I'm going, it appears to be I'm going slightly slower but the, the treadmill set at the same speed for every single one. Um, so the speed is very similar, the meters per second similar, the cadence again 171 versus 172 to 174. You could say that that's understandable given that the, the Costco court shoe is over twice the weight of the others. Um, heart rate though for that is no higher than it would be for any others. In fact it's actually lower ex except for the Pegasus on a cut on one run. Um, leg spring stiffness um, slightly lower than some of the others. Um, vertical oscillation 6.41 centimeters again it's very similar to all the others so i can't see a reason why the costco court shoe should actually give me lower power figures than virtually everything else out there the fact that it's the cheapest shoe really is annoying to me and it doesn't feel good either running in the shoe you don't feel like you're bouncing along you feel like you've really got something attached like a brick attached to your foot but the numbers don't lie they actually seem low. So the two shoes that appear to cost me least in power output for a given distance or speed are the court shoe and the cloud runner. What this test of course doesn't do is test conditions outside. So we're going to do one more week of testing these shoes. This time we're going to head out into the big outdoors and see if there's a difference there. So stick around for next week's episode when we test the shoes outside and find out for certain are we wasting money on buying expensive running shoes? <laughs>